Section 2.2 Polynomial Functions In Lesson 2.1 you learned about the basic characteristics of monomial functions. Monomial functions being like just x squared, y equals x squared, that's a monomial function. Uh, monomial functions are the most basic polynomial functions. The sums and differences of monomial functions form other types of polynomial functions. Let n be a non-negative integer and let a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way to a sub n be real numbers with a sub n not equal to 0. Then the function given by all of this, see we have the coefficient and the leading uh, leading term here. And then we have another coefficient. And then this, if this was x to the third, then this would be x squared. It would be minus 1. And then we get all the way down to the constant, like plus 5. That would be a polynomial. And it's of degree n, so this would be, the specific one would be a degree 3. The leading coefficient of polynomial function is a coefficient of the variable with the greatest exponent. The leading coefficient of f of x is a sub n. Let's graph transformations of monomial functions. Graph each function. We start out with f of x is equal to x to the fifth as a monomial function. And then we have minus 2 on the inside, which means this is going to be pushed to the right. Now, 0 to the 5th is 0, 1 to the 5th is 1, but 2 to the 5th is 32. So this now increases very, very quickly up like that. Negative 1 to the 5th is negative 1, and then negative 2 to the 5th is negative 32. So here's the basic idea of what this graph looks like. Now the minus 2 is going to push that graph 2 to the right. So this gets pushed over 2, this is pushed over 2, and this is pushed over 2. And we have the same steepness cutting through these points, same steepness right there. On this one, we start out with uh, g of x is equal to x to the fourth. 0 to the fourth is 0, 1 to the fourth is 1. 2 to the fourth is 16, so again, this goes very steep like that. This goes very steep, something like that, except it's more straight. And then this negative, the negative reflects over the x-axis. So any point on the x-axis stays there. This stays. Uh, 1 goes to negative 1. 1 goes to negative 1. And so now this graph is going down like that, reflected over the x-axis. And then the plus 1 is going to push everything up 1. So now this gets pushed up 1, up 1, up 1. So the whoops, that's a little too far over. So something like that. Next, we're going to look at the leading term test for polynomial n behavior. If n is odd and a sub n is positive, we're going to look at the ending behavior. And that would be like if we had f of x is equal to x to the third. To the third, where the, the it's positive, but this is odd. So positive and odd. Well, x to the third looks like this right here. So with ending behavior, the limit as x approaches infinity. In other words, as we use x's that are bigger and bigger, y is going up. So this is going up to infinity. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is negative infinity. As x gets uh, smaller, going to negative infinity, y is also going to negative infinity. Now, we can have functions that twist and turn, but if the leading coefficient is positive and the leading term, its degree is odd, then it's going to act like x to the third on the ends. Now, we're not talking about in the middle. It can do some twisting and turning in the middle, but we're just talking about the ending behavior. Now, if we had f of x is equal to negative x to the third, where the coefficient is negative, but we have an odd degree, then this is going to act like negative x to the third, which looks like that. So now, the limit as x approaches infinity, as x gets bigger and bigger, y is getting smaller of f of x is equal to negative infinity. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is positive infinity. So as x gets smaller or more negative, y is getting uh, more positive. In other words, going up to infinity. Now, what if we had uh, f of x equals x to the fourth? Something like that. That's going to do this action right here. And then if you have more terms, it can do some twisting and turning. But the limit as x approaches infinity, actually, as x approaches, let's do limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity of f of x is now going to be infinity on both sides. Well, what if the coefficient is negative, but we have an even degree, like f of x equals negative x to the fourth? Well, that's going to look like this, look like this on the ends. It might do some twisting and turning in the middle, but that's what the ending behavior 
is going to look like. We have limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity of f of x is equal to, in this case, negative infinity. Well, now we just apply those same rules, describe the end behavior of all these graphs. Well, the leading term is right here. That's the biggest power. We have a positive and even. So if we have a positive and even, it looks like x squared, like that. So limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of f of x is equal to positive infinity. And we can take a look at the graph or over here, and we can see it's going up on both sides. Now in letter G, you have to be, or letter B, I, I should say, you have to be careful because the leading term is sitting right here. It's not listed first. This is the biggest degree. So we have a negative and an odd. Now that's going to look like a negative x to the third. That's what negative x to the third looks like. So the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is equal to negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x, in this case, is equal to positive infinity. And we can look at the graph here, and we're going to see that the ending behavior matches what we just listed. On letter C, we have h of x. And the leading term is x to the third. So now we have limit as x approaches infinity of h of x is equal to, well, x to the third ends like that. So we're going to infinity. So that's going to infinity. And the limit as h approaches negative infinity of h of x is equal to negative infinity. And so the ending behavior should match what we just listed, positive to the right, negative to the left. Zeros and turning points of polynomial functions. A polynomial function f of degree n greater than or equal to 1 has at most n distinct real zeros and at most n minus 1 turning points. Now the degree of this polynomial is 6, so there's a possibility of 6 zeros and a possibility of 5 turning points where the graph turns. Well, the graph of this specific one has 1, 2, 3 distinct zeros, and we said at most 6. And the turning points is 1, it turns here, it turns there, and it turns there. So it only has three turning points, but it could have had at most five. Zeros of a polynomial function. State the number of possible real zeros and turning points of this function. Then determine all the real zeros by factoring. So let's look at the amount of zeros, distinct zeros we could possibly have. We could possibly have three. And the turning points are two. Now they want us to find the zeros. Zero is equal to, we can factor out an x. We get x squared minus 5x plus 6. And that factors into x minus 3 and x minus 2. And so x is equal to 0, 3, and 2. So it turns out there are three distinct zeros. And if we graph this, there probably would be uh, two turning points. So exact same instructions for g of x here. So we have the number of possible distinct zeros, in this case, is 4. The highest degree is 4. And with the number of possible turning points for the graph, uh, one less than the zeros is 3. So we have, uh, we, they want us to find the zeros, and we can factor this into x squared minus 4. And x squared, how about plus 1? Well, we can't make this 0, that's impossible, but we can make this 0 x squared minus 4 equals 0. We could factor or we could use square roots on this one. Square root both sides, get plus or minus 2. So there turns out to be uh, two distinct zeros on this one rather than 4, but there's a possibility of 4. On this last one here, uh, we have the number of distinct zeros could be all the way up to 4. And with the turning points, uh, there's going to be three possible turning points. Now they want us to find the zeros, and I'm going to factor out a negative x squared. That leaves x squared plus x plus, oh, actually minus, because I'm factoring out a negative, so that's going to be a minus. Let's fix the x here. That's going to be minus 2, so we have negative x squared, and this factors into x uh, plus 2 and x minus 1. So the number of distinct zeros is 0 for this guy right here, but 0 counts twice, negative 2 and 1. Apply the leading term test to this function. So apply the leading term test. Well, if we multiplied this out, it'd be x times x, that's x squared, 
times another x squared, the leading term would be 2x to the fourth. So the limit as x approaches plus or minus uh, infinity of f of x is going to be uh, positive infinity. Is that right? Yeah, because we have an x squared here and an x squared here when we multiply it all out. So on both sides, this function is going to be going up uh, on, the, on the ends. Determine the zeros and state the multiplicity of any repeated zeros. So the zeros are zero for that guy right there. So x equals zero. Multiplicity of one. Negative three halves for this one with a multiplicity of one. And then one makes this zero, but it has a multiplicity, M-U-L-T, multiplicity of two because it counts twice. Now, if you have a multiplicity of two, that means the graph is going to bounce off of this zero. And with an odd multiplicity like this one with one, it cuts through this point and the graph will cut through this point. So we have a zero of zero, a zero of negative one and a half, and a zero of one. Now we know the ending behavior is up on both sides. We know this graph isn't going to turn and come back to the x-axis because there would be another zero. There would be another point on the x-axis. Well, now we need uh, a few additional, it says a few additional points in order to graph this. Well, we need some points in between the zeros. How about, uh, this would be a nice one. How about negative one? So we need f of negative one is equal to negative one. So we plug negative one in there. Uh, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 3. That's going to be 1 when we plug negative 1 in. And then negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 squared, which is going to be negative 4. So this one goes down to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we know the mul multiplicity of this is 1, so it's going to cut through, go down to this point. It could go down farther, but this is going to be a rough sketch of it. Uh, eventually it's going to have to turn and go back to this 0 right here. How about we plug in 1 half? So we need f of one half. Now that's going to be one half times half of two is one. One plus three is four. And then we have negative one half. One half minus one is negative one half squared. That's one fourth. Now these cancel out to make one and one times a half is one half. So this goes up to a half. Now that might not be the highest point, but we'll call it the highest point. And it bounces off of that point because ha this has a multiplicity of 2. So that's even. It has to bounce off of this 0. So here is the graph roughly of this function.